very special hour of jazz for you this evening to help celebrate. My guests here at Piano Forte for the hour are the piano, vocal, and saxophone team of Judy Roberts and Greg Fishman. It's one of the inspired pairings in Chicago. You can applaud. That's all right. <laughs> oh, we're going to have too much fun tonight. It's one of the inspired pairings in Chicago jazz, and each have deep roots in our city's music scene, and we'll talk with them a little bit later. First, I'd like to mention that today's broadcast comes to you in partnership with Piano Forte Chicago, dedicated to helping people to love the piano. Further information available at pianofortechicago.com. This event is part of a week-long series of live radio broadcasts here on WDCB, which will include three live performances here at Piano Forte, and three later this week from the Chicago Jazz Festival in Millennium Park. You can find out more about the broadcast and the festival itself at WDCB.org. Tonight's event is also being televised by our friends at Can TV. They're presenting this event across the city of Chicago on cable on Can TV Channel 27. WDCB's Jazz Fest Week broadcasts are made possible by Delmark Records, America's oldest independent jazz and blues label, with information on new and upcoming jazz releases at Delmark.com. Support also comes from Sharprint Decorated Apparel. So at this time, we'd like to welcome to our broadcast two brilliant musicians, two dear friends, Judy Roberts and Greg Fishman, live from Piano Forte at WDCB. Thank you. 
Barry, that wasn't, the piano was playing itself, it wasn't me. I mean, this, this is unbelievable piano. We brought our pickup truck to take it home with us on this one. <laughs> okay, Greg, now's the next part. I lost my voice, by the way, that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> but um, it's so wonderful playing with this piano. It's just really incredible. Yeah. And uh, the Fazioli. And well, of course, playing with Judy, <laughs> but with Judy on this piano. I mean, yesterday it was with Judy, but it was on a rolling keyboard. <laughs> Today it's on a Fazioli. So, oh, man, so man. Judy could express herself more oh, with good. this. Thank you. Very good. Yes. So we're going to continue now with one of my original tunes. This one's called Dahlia. This is on my uh, the penultimate, my second to last CD. It's on New Journey. And thanks to uh, Barry and DCB for playing this. They made this the top airplay. Uh, from that one, and I've got to tell you the story how I, I didn't have a title for this tune. I wrote it, and one of the hardest things for a composer is coming up with a title. And uh, I played it at a club in Chicago, ended the set with it, and on the break, a woman came up and said, hey, what was that last tune? I really liked that. And I said, well, I just wrote it. I don't know what to call it. And she said, well, my name is Dahlia, and I'm from Texas, <laughs> so I think you should call the tune Dahlia. <laughs> I didn't think much of it, so I just took a pencil out right there on the lead sheet. I, you know, put her name on it. And uh, a few years later, when I was recording that album, I, you know, I was looking through my tunes, like, oh, this is a cool tune. And uh, it ended up being the number one airplay from the album. And uh, I don't know how to reach this woman, Dahlia. Good. If, you, if you see some woman named, Good. <laughs> if you see some woman named Dahlia from Texas, tell her her song is on the radio. Okay, this is Dahlia. It's D minor, right? D minor. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Dahlia. I'm, I'm standing here with this piano. You're going home by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be sure to write to you while you're here. <laughs> this next tune is one always associated with the jazz flute, a really early flute number written by Mo Kaufman, Canadian saxophonist, and this is called the Swingin' Shepherd Blues. For those without perfect pitch, we're in the key of C. You want to follow along with the chords. <laughs> Thank you. 
Greg Fishman, saxophone and flute. Pianist Judy Roberts and her Fazioli. <laughs> Come on over here, you guys. You better sit in the middle. Well, you can you can sit where you want. That's okay. Yeah, and when the music starts, then you stand and you get up and you walk around and they'll take away a chair and then you have to do the I next like meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Hey, you're listening to WDCB. It's uh, DCB Jazz. I'm Barry Winograd. I'm here at Piano Forte Foundation, and uh, we're with Greg Fishman and Judy Roberts. And uh, thanks for being with us, uh, you guys. It's great to see you. And Judy, I'm going to do this because that way it'll really I'm, hear I'm you. I'm my language, just so you know. Okay. I well, that's this good. Is, this that's is good. Like you got a seven-second delay on this thing, right? <laughs> huh? Well, it's actually 6.59. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you I need eight, be careful. I need eight point oh. Okay. <laughs> but... Uh, you guys have uh, been together a long time, and we've got a lot of different things we want to talk about. First of all, we should tell everyone heard Green Dolphin Street, Dahlia, and Swing and Shepherd Blues, a wonderful uh, mixture of different uh, songs. Thanks. And, uh, well, 
I don't know. I, where I'd like to start is, uh, as I told Judy earlier, I was uh, re sort of rereading about her. There's this uh, wonderful book, if you can find it still in print, American Women in Jazz. came out in the 70s, early 80s probably. Right. And Judy's mentioned in it as one of the up-and-coming stars. And uh, we all three have been on the scene for a long time. I mean, I remember coming back in Ratzos. Oh, sure. You know, Halstead Lincoln, and Lincoln. Lincoln and that was her, her spot. Right. And all the way up north, and there was all sorts of clubs and things going on. And what differences have you observed? You you come and go out of Chicago. You live in Arizona for part of the year. Right. And uh, what have you seen that has really changed on the scene? How has the scene changed for you? And uh, what's going on out there in the last uh, well, couple in, of years? <laughs> in my heyday, in the in the really good old days, we'd be playing on Rush Street, and people remember the back room. Oh, yeah. oh sure. Yeah. And, uh, would have been like what the late late seventies, mid seventies, and you started on weeknights. You started at nine thirty and went till three thirty. Right. On Saturdays you started at ten thirty and went to four thirty. Mm -hmm. And you'd get out of the club at five a.m. You'd open the doors onto Rush Street. The streets would be full of people, well dressed, well behaved, spending money, high class. And that would never. Those days are like over. I mean, you can't. This and is, you knew what restaurant to go to to go see uh, Bud Freeman have breakfast. Exa with them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You'd be hanging out with musicians afterwards, and all that whole thing has definitely changed. Yeah. And as far as the change goes, I mean, you're an observer, oral observer of uh, the scene and uh, the various musicians who are coming along. Have you seen the music too? The way it's being presented changed since then. Uh, big time. Uh huh. I mean, like. Well, we just did this Mr. Kelly's in London House thing at the City Winery, right. and that was basically the epitome of the great days where we had you know, Oscar Peterson, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, Larry Pointiana Novak. guy, oh, Amma Jamal, Amma Jamal and my, my heroine, let me say that word right, yeah. my heroine, not heroine, my heroine, <laughs> Marion McPartland, and that's sure. when I remembered to, to say, oh my God, like, I realized that women could play the piano, they could be the band leader, they could use foul language behind the scenes when nobody heard of them. <laughs> and uh, that, was, that was really something, getting to know her. And we became very good friends and stayed such until she passed away a few years ago. So yeah. it was an eye-opener. And if you can find it, uh, you did a show with her too, right? Yes, three. Was, we did three of those three shows. shows. And you talk about the six-second delay between the two of us. It was very <laughs> scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pre-recorded, so that, that makes it easier. Yeah, right. Yeah. And Greg, you've uh, also uh, been on the scene a long time, and you're a teacher here in town. Mm -hmm. You've got numerous students. How do you see that changing as, you know, you came up and you learned how to play and there were certain things that our generation saw and heard and, and cats we got to know. How has that changed for the uh, younger saxophone players, the younger instrumentalists, the younger players who are coming up? Yeah, it's interesting. It's, um, you know, when I was coming up, uh, I started playing professional. I was about 14. And um, I got to meet uh, and study with Joe Daly was my first Sure. Really serious jazz teacher, wow. a, a legendary Chicago player and teacher. And um, the jazz showcase sure helped my education because as soon as I got my <laughs> driver's license when I was 16, I was down there. Matter of fact, Judy's one of the first acts I ever saw down there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't At least you got in. I won't say the year. Yeah, I I, well, thanks to Joe, he yeah, got me yeah, in. Yeah. But uh, that's how I got to study with Joe Henderson, who's one of my teachers, and James Moody. Mm -hmm. And I would be there every set, every night, and I got to hang with these guys, and uh, it was, I got sort of the very tail end of the old school way of doing it, where it was sort of like an apprenticeship. You know, they'd invite you up on the bandstand, and they'd kind of, they'd let you play, they'd give you some advice. Uh, I'd hang with Moody, Moody'd say, hey, come by the hotel tomorrow afternoon, and we're gonna hang out and do some playing. And we'd hang in this hotel room for five hours, and just have an exchange of ideas, and play tunes, and talk about music. And uh, same with Joe Henderson. We'd uh, say, hey, meet me down there. And Joe would go to the piano in the old Blackstone when the showcase was there. And he'd, he'd call a tune, and I'd play with him. And it was just a beautiful thing. You know, uh, it was a, such a sharing thing. And it wasn't all about um, just academics. Right. What it, how has it changed a lot? I think it's kind of gotten, now that was before YouTube and the internet and all that. I mean, it existed, but it wasn't in popular Well, we were use. learning off cassettes. So right, exactly right, right. 
I had my Charlie Parker tape that I had recorded. The way I used to do it, I'd record it on an open reel, which I still have. Like a, a, like I had a, a wow. seven inch open reel. Wow. I'd record it at uh, seven and a half. I'd play it back at three and three quarters, and then I'd dub oh. that to cassette, and that would go in the car. Uh-huh. So I'd listen, listen to my Charlie Parker half speed cassette <laughs> in the car, so I could so I could sing the solos along with Parker, and then work them up to full speed. Wow. But you know, it was really. And back then, like you'd listen to a record. But I tell my students now because like. I would listen to one record for months and months, right. like thousands of times, until you could sing every solo on the record by memory, until you could, it was just a part of you and you'd play it along. And now it seems everyone just wants to go to YouTube and they hear, I said, oh, have you heard that album? It's like, well, I heard part of a tune from that album. It's like they haven't even heard the, not only is the attention span not enough to hear the whole record in one sitting, it's not enough to hear a tune in one <laughs> sitting. Right. It's right. like, oh, I heard this guy's solo on that one tune from that album. But I'm, I'm really old school that I'm still a record collector, and I like to put on the record and listen for 20 minutes. I, I imagine it as if I'm listening to a set of music like when I was young, and I'd go to a club to hear a 40- or 50-minute set, and that's the record. Mm-hmm. So with my students, and my students are on Skype. They're all over the world, actually. They're in 12 countries. That's one thing that's changed a lot. When I started teaching, I was teaching, mm-hmm. I taught 60 people in person a week all through the 90s. Wow. And um, now it's, they're in 12 different countries and they're on Skype and they're all different ages and all. That's one good thing that came out, I think, of the internet and all of this technology is that it does give you access. Like where I'm collecting these weird records and it would take me 10 years to find some obscure recording by Sonny Stitt. Yeah. Now you can go on YouTube or you can go to uh, uh, iTunes Music and you can pull it up right away. So it, it does have some positive effects as well, you know, but it's just uh, everything is so easy to access, and I think it kind of gets into information overload that people kind of don't know where to turn, and so right. they need to, like, just sit down and listen to a whole record. I'm like, have you ever listened to this whole record all the way through in the order of the songs in which <laughs> they were presented? That's radical. You know, it's like you listen to a Sinatra album, and those guys were just – they took such care to present those songs in a certain order, mm-hmm. and they had no idea that people were going to just be, uh, you know, checking out 30 seconds of that song. So, oh, okay, I get it. You know, I get yeah. the gist of it. You know, yeah. so it's different. But it's, it's there's there is a lot of um, enthusiasm. I was just in uh, a teaching up in uh, Skidmore in Saratoga Springs at Skidmore Jazz Institute, and it was all young people, all all high school age kids, and these kids were so familiar with the history of the music. I could be talking to them about. Zoot Sims or Stan Getz or Coltrane or Lester Young. Say, you know about the Lester Young solo on Shoe Shine Boy? And some did and some didn't. And I'd pull it up and we'd be in my room and we'd listen to it together and we'd start talking about it. And it's just, that part of the history is so important. I think that needs to be brought out more. What What I'm seeing brought out in some situations is where this thing called scale chord theory. So Mm -hmm. you see this chord, you play this scale, and it's become almost like a paint by numbers approach. I can understand the necessity when you're teaching in a classroom situation, it's nice to be able to say, well, this is the correct answer and this is the incorrect. It's almost like teaching math. But But the music's not like that. A one-on-one, when I learned the song Twisted, you know the song, my my analyst told me that it was right in my head and they got all those choruses of, I can't sing it over. In my day, I sat in my parents' house with the turntable and the needle, and I go, back it up, right. back it up. By right. the time I learned that song, my parents knew the song, too. Right. It, it got played so many times over and over again. How else would you get the, the best way, well, way and to plus do you it? need to buy two LPs because you always wore one out. <laughs> that's yeah, right. and that's I did. true. I, mean, I, that's I right. did, too. Right. There was quite well, that, in my day, that's how you learned it. And you, and you learned the whole song. You heard what the, they were all doing. It was a much more educational, full-scale thing than it is now. Yeah. yeah well, and they'll never experience what we experienced. I remember the first time I heard Louis Hot Five on CD, and I went, oh, there is a banjo on there. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice to get that cleaned up. Well, can we get you guys to do some more music? Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Let's do it. All right. Well, uh, Thanks, this Gary. is uh, Trudy Roberts <laughs> and Greg Fishman, and uh, we're here at Piano Forte in Chicago. And I'd like to remind you, here at DCB Jazz, we will be broadcasting here tomorrow night. And Margaret Murphy Webb will be here. And then on Wednesday as well from 67 with Miguel de la Serna and uh, Marlene Rosenberg. Nice. All right. All right. Aren't you, you're playing at the jazz. And you're all invited. <laughs> yeah. tell, tell Barry where you're playing. Oh, that's right. Tell them what we're playing. I'll listen. Okay, I'm playing with Paulina Garcia and Steve Eisen and Ator oh. Garcia on Sunday at uh, noon on the Heritage Stage. Oh, well, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. All right, I'll, I, gosh, I get to introduce him so. twice this week. Man, I'm so lucky. You got a bag on your side? Sure. Oh, yeah.
This next one is the title track for my latest CD. It's called So You Say. This was recorded with a fantastic uh, tenor player named Doug Webb. Doug is like the L.A. He's on everything. When you, if you ever watch, uh, he's on a lot of soundtracks. If you ever watch L.A. Law, he's the guy who plays soprano when they have just the soprano playing the theme. But Doug is an incredible tenor player. He played with Freddie Hubbard for a couple of years. He played with uh, Horace Silver for a number of years. And the pianist on that record, Mitch Foreman, played with Wayne Shorter. Um, it was just his birthday, too, right? So happy birthday to Wayne Shorter. <laughs> and he played with Stan Getz. And we just had this incredible session. It was live like the old days. We were all next to each other. No edits. Live recording. And uh, this is the title track, So You Say. Does someone start some F sharp? Yes. Good. Thank you. 
your speech. Thank you. So you say. Yeah, I'll have a bail. It's a little depressing. Okay. Want to hold me a while? Yeah, that's depressing. Well, it depends on how you look at it.
Fishman, Judy Roberts, my one and only love, and before that, so you say. We're going to talk real quick because we're running out of time already. Too much good music. Hey, we're at Piano Forte at 1335 South Michigan Avenue. We want to uh, thank everyone here for being here, and we've got time to quickly. I've got so many other things I want to talk to you guys about, but I've only Let's known you for a couple of days. So, uh, First of all, before I forget, tell them the websites where they can find your music. And your schedule of performances. Just JudyRoberts.com. Simple Judy spelling. JudyRoberts.com. Aryan name, yeah, you know. Yeah, is it with a capital J or a small J? <laughs> it matters now, right? I don't I'm, think it matters. No. Oh, it doesn't Ask matter. Ask him, he's right. the, the wizard. Okay. Right, and my, mine is, my educational website is GregFishmanJazzStudios.com. Okay. And that's got all my books and a lot of my educational videos about the music and ear training and how do you learn tunes and uh, all, all that good stuff, you know. Yeah, well, some of the basics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Besides... Strive for tone. <laughs> <laughs> Strive for tone. Yes. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I just wanted to say one other thing is that you guys bring something back to the bandstand that not enough people do anymore. Cannonball did it. Duke did it. You talk to the audience. Right. You engage the audience not only with your great music, but Judy especially. I mean, whenever I've seen her, and I've seen her a couple of times, uh, <laughs> she really knows how to talk and make you feel comfortable and warm and wonderful, and then you get into the music and... That's a art form, a part, or part of the art form that seems to be uh, missing. Everybody is so damn yeah. serious. I mean, I would swear I didn't know people were in here when I was starting to play <laughs> piano. My language was flying around. And I'm like, oh my God, but it was okay because we're all on the same page. You know, it wasn't like mm. that weird. But yeah, I think things were much more. I like to talk to people, and it's fun. Yeah. And you find out what they want to hear, you know, where they're from and all that. And, and do you encourage your students to like, you know, okay, you play a tune and then tell them, all right, you know, just Dahlia, this is a song that I right. recorded and anything exactly. simple Exactly, just a like little that. bit of, it just helps people relate to it if you can tie in with something instead of just tune after tune, like, I'll play a tune, I'll say like, you know, we did Green Dolphin Street, we started right. with that. It's by, I said, I'll say to the student, I said, do you know who wrote that? And they're like, no. I'm like, <laughs> okay, it's a guy named Branislaw Caper. So you know where it came from? He's like, no, okay. It came from a movie called On Green Dolphin Street with Van Heflin and Lana Turner, okay. and it's from 1947. And you should go watch that movie, and you can hear the beautiful soundtrack where that's in there. So I really love the history. It's such a rich history of the music, of the songs, and of what's been done with the songs over the years. Right. That I, I, it's just, it's, there's so much great stuff to dig into that I think... Uh, my whole way of teaching is what I call uh, non-academic. It's just real-world stuff I just learned from just being a player for years and mm -hmm. years and just being around the world. And uh, just getting into the music itself, like people are always looking for, you know, I had a guy I was teaching the other day, and he's like, well, just tell me the formula. What's the formula for improvising? Ah, ah, like, well, first you get the oatmeal. Right. <laughs> then the hot water. Right. It's like, well, well, tell me the formula for speaking Japanese, and I'll just start right now. You know, It's like, it's, there's no formula. It's a, it's a language, I said, and you have to really immerse yourself in the language. And it's like, not I'm just the about... the opposite of that. I'm the complete Right, but you're doing it by ear. Like I, by ear. Right. I, I speak... Watashi ni hongo ga sukoshi wa kerimasu. I speak a little bit of Japanese, but only because I toured Japan and I used to work for a Japanese club owner. And I, here and there, I learned how to speak. Now I took French in college for a semester or so, and yeah, I could, you know, I could draw a map of Europe and I could read. I could tell you what the thing was saying when I was reading it, but I can't speak French. And yeah. that's a good example, I think. Now my Japanese came from being on tour there and having to be able to express myself. 
Um, French was, uh, it was more like, well, this is my course I'm taking and I don't want it to affect my grade point average in poorly or whatever. <laughs> it, was like, it was a class that I took three days a week for an hour and a half at a time. But, but that's how people are approaching music. I, exactly. I just say this, right. throw your hands down with the reason and when the thing sounds right, you'll know. And if you don't know, you shouldn't be playing anyway. Right. That's, that's a famous quote. I think it was, that's right. <laughs> right, Mary? I think that's a famous quote. I'm, I think it's attributed to Duke Ellington. He said something like, if it sounds good, it is good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's what I tell my students, because the students a lot of times are asking me incredibly technical, they're technical questions. Like, when do I use the diminished whole tone scale? In what situation would I use that mm -hmm. scale? I'm like, well, you, when you, it sounds right. When it sounds right. I said, well, you have to hear those notes. And so yeah. you're not going to be able to just apply a formula. So. And we're married, and I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and we're okay. And that's, you know, that's really, that's yeah. really okay. All right, we're running out of time, so can we get okay. you guys to do one more? Okay. Sure. Which, uh, All right. Time do we have, so I know what uh, time for one more. Four minutes. Four minutes. Let's see. So we won't do a ballad. Do, do you know, no, do you you know do the, the uh, four minute samba? You could do the minute waltz four times. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Judy Roberts and Greg Fishman. You're <laughs> listening to DCD Jazz, and we are live at Piano Forte Chicago.